tonight's talk, I will be uh, using the the uplifting talk before the meditation formula tonight again, <laughs> and well, hopefully it's uplifting. And uh, it's the a little a little short sutta that is uh, called Sukha Somanasa Sutta. Sukha means happiness. Somanasa means. Uh, mental grace or mental joy and uh, the two combine together <laughs> in one sutta and um, it talks a little bit about uh, directing the the ways in which we delight in which we find happiness in life and to direct things that are direct it to things that are wholesome and that have uh, a direct, immediate, but also a long-term uplifting and supporting effect on our lives uh, compared to other kinds of happiness that are more uh, quickly consumed and quickly vanished and leave us sometimes feeling a little hungry and so these ways of delighting um, here that the Buddha explains uh, in this beautiful sutta uh, are very uh, wonderful and skillful and have a tendency of uh, filling up our, our, our hearts <laughs> and so he says monks Possessing six qualities, a monk abounds, or anybody, in happiness and mental grace here and now. And one is thoroughly undertaking the way to the stilling of mental influences. These are called the asawas. Asawas is when uh, the word asawa means uh, from the root shru, which means to flow and these asavas are this tendency of the mind to be influenced in in fluctuation towards things and uh, basically simply said distractions <laughs> or mental wavering mental movement with mental agitation and here the, the Buddha says the, it's the asawa kayang is the way to stopping these, stilling these flows, these currents of the mind. Because these, uh, with, with current comes friction, with uh, flowing comes friction. And this, this friction, even though sometimes it is subtle, um, and kind of uh, become established and we don't really notice it. So these are the six ways of delighting in things that bring away, uh, bring freedom and bring liberation and wholesome happiness. So the first one is delighting in the Dharma and obviously this one is fairly important but it's um, in a more concrete way. This means taking delight in the teaching, taking delight in, in the training, taking delight in virtue, taking delight and seeing happiness in developing these wonderful wholesome qualities. And once we develop this delighting in the Dharma, well, we, we align with the Dharma and this brings a lot of happiness. And it's an investment in the long term. We, we invest it now. Uh, like, I like I said in a, a few times, it's not like you're eating a chocolate bar. It's, it's the, the, the effect is not as instantaneous, but it will manifest over time and as we learn to invest wisely into this kind of delight, delighting in the Dharma, in helping others, 
well then we we find a source of happiness a source of delight that is very strong and very unshakable then and that supports us at the same time the second one is delight in mental development and so this is simply said abandoning selfishness selfish states being cultivating a generous mind an open mind a mind that is free of tension and letting go of uh, dislikes uh, that also create tension when uh, dislikes arises well there might be dislike but we can learn to develop our mind in a wholesome way so that when this like arises it does not create havoc in the mind and it is seen for what it is and it e easily let go of so we abandon states that create friction create tension within us and by doing this the mind becomes very uplifted because these uh, selfish state and uh, aversive states disliking and liking and judging very everything the mind becomes a bit like a rock and it tends to sink because it is very heavy and when we learn to develop the mind we learn to reopen it and let go of that tension and the mind naturally like like the Buddha said, like ghee and water, it will naturally float up. Then there's delight in abandoning. And this one is interesting. Not eh, all kinds of abandoning, but abandoning the unwholesome. Abandoning things that are uh, unskillful and that create... Uh, create that are harmful to us and so and w what is that what is the main cause of that well that is this very uh, tension that is creating tension and uh, having strong strong uh, judgments and opinions and strong uh, attachments uh, hard like rock like big blocks of salt in our lives that we try to and the more the more we hold the more we crystallize this tension which is tanha which is called craving but that's a big nasty word I try not to use too much and uh, we 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 learn that well these these big blocks in our lives they're not really comfortable to work around <laughs> and often they have sharp corners and we have to rub against them and the more we have them the more they take space in our lives and the more we have big nuts and big sharp salty edges and with learning to delight and abandoning well it's like dissolving these these big blocks in our lives and we just abandon all these things that are creating us so much tension inside because this tension we nobody really wants it <laughs> we can do much better without the tension the light in solitude and this is viveka viveka is a special word because it means a few things and in uh, in the, in a way, it means solitude. The solitude, not only physical, like we're experiencing and we've seen in COVID, <laughs> we've had a pretty good forced retreat upon us, which is good, has its benefits to it. But um, it's not only physical retreat; it's also mental retreat mental seclusion viveka is a synonym for the word nibbana also and it also means detachment and detachment in in the wholesome perspective in a way that in fact when we look at how the buddha taught his path of meditation the first 
level of meditation comes when we feel this piti sukha vivekang, uh, this blissful happiness born of detachment. Because when we stop engaging with in all the senses, the mind becomes very relieved, in fact. And this is one ha thing that happens in meditation and in longer retreats also. And we don't really notice it until we meditate for some time. And then we realize, oh, yes, <laughs> my mind feels much lighter. Because it's... It's also, viveka also means uh, disengaging, disengaging. Stop, stop always being engaged and engaged, uh, gearing up, gearing up all the time. Well, now it's gearing down a little bit <laughs> towards neutral. And then the mind is very happy and blissful. This is the meditative viveka, meditative detachment and the light in non-hatred well that is loving kindness boundless love and when we learn to seek the light in this uh, we become very 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 happy and our mind becomes very 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 wholesome because when we have only loving kindness and compassion for all living beings, well, this state, by definition, is a happy state. And to learn to direct our happiness and mm, perhaps dig uh, for happiness in there <laughs> uh, dig a, make this the well of our happiness then we can tap it into that that wealth that happiness at any time and the more we develop it the more we enjoy it and uh, having love and compassion for all the time for all living beings is uh, very happy and we soon realize that when we start training the mind in that way we don't really need much <laughs> because the mind is just happy it's just very at ease and uh, uh, graceful And also that its opposite state, hatred or aversion, what I said dislike earlier, is not a happy state. <laughs> and to clearly make that difference, and once we move towards the non-hatred, the loving-kindness, the Buddha was big on saying that, avarana, non-hatred. And um, we we also get to see a clear reflection of its opposite which is disliking aversion and we can clearly see it as a very heavy unpleasant state to be in so why 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 would we invest any of our mental energy into this kind of unwholesome state for whatever reason there's no good reason to be angry. There's no good reason to, to say bad things to someone. There's no good reason to, to feel hate for something. Because in the first place, we're hurting ourselves. So non-hatred is very good. <laughs> and the last one is delight in non-proliferation. I believe this is uh, Nipa Pancha, Nipa Pancha. Papancha in Pali is uh, what we translate as proliferation, this mental this propensity of the mind 
to kind of get winded up <laughs> on its own and to propagate it's also mental propagation and these are kind of habitual tendencies that we have cultivated fairly unconsciously it's very subtle uh, but we we indulge in them and we indulge in thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and we solve all of our problems by thinking thinking about the problem not knowing that most of the time thinking is the problem <laughs> and that it's keeping us for from actually seeing seeing the situation in all of its clarity because our mind is clouded by papancha constant 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 the hamster rolling in the wheel and so we are kind of shaded by this papancha always thinking and that thinking also has its weight it has a it has a, a weight on the mind and once this weight is lifted the mind is uplifted naturally and this is what we learn to do in the in the practice and so the, these are the six six things the six ways of delighting in things in life that the buddha advised uh, anybody the monks but everyone to to develop and to invest in this is wise investment of our mental energy of our inclinations of our aspirations and this this by practicing in this way we abound here and now in happiness and mental grace and we are practicing the way to nibbana eventually by holding these six which are delighting in the dhamma delighting in bhavana mental development delighting in abandoning delighting in solitude delighting in non-hatred or loving kindness and delighting in nipapancha non-proliferation these six lead to nibbana need to the complete stilling of the mental inclinations the mental movements and with this as a beginning we can simply I invite you to take take a position in which you feel comfortable right now close your eyes and relax any tension that's in your body right now and bring a smile on your lips if there's any tension anywhere in particular in your body Simply try to release the grip, release the hold that is causing that tension. And right now, right here, as the tension fades away, enjoy the relief that it brings and smile
Now there might be a stream of thoughts going on in your mind. Papancha, papancha. Something you've done today and something you're planning for tomorrow. Or some kind of life event. Or memories. Don't try to control it. Simply just let it run its course and relax. Let go of it. Let it be on its own. And smile. Not grabbing on to any of the thoughts, really. Simply relaxing as it goes by. And smiling. As we go about in our day, we often pick up all kinds of tension in the mind and in the, in the body as well. And it takes some time to simply relax. And it's not something that we can rush. In fact, it's the opposite. It's learning to unrush. Slowing down. This can be subtle, this can be sneaky. We might not realize we pick up all kinds of tension. And that is why Reserving some time every day for meditation is so important. Patrick, Patrick, can you mute? Trista, oh good. Sad, sad. to take the mind so seriously the wild monkey mind jumping from one branch to the other in fact learning to laugh at it laugh at the mind being constantly distracted going wherever it wants, doing whatever it likes. Just relax, no big deal.
and smile. Remember that joy, piti, is the fourth and one of the most of the sev important of the seven awakening factors. Joy is a part of awakening. The Buddha explained this many, many, many times. And as we relax and start experiencing viveka, disengagement, meditative detachment, the seclusion of the mind. you might notice that the awareness of the body arises and becomes clearer, more sharp, crisp. And we can take delight in this calm awareness of the body. slowly, slowly dissolving all the blocks that we've accumulated. It takes a little bit of time. What matters is that we keep relaxing and enjoying with a smile. And we might notice that by relaxing, the smiling becomes easier. And by smiling, the relaxing also becomes easier.
enjoying this blissful solitude of the mind. And whenever you are ready, you can bring up the feeling of love in your heart. This warm, radiant feeling perhaps tingling feeling in the center of your chest. welling up from inside your heart. And spreading through your whole body. this feeling of tenderness of sympathy and let it fill your whole body and your whole mind And remember to relax, not to try too hard, the feeling of loving kindness has to grow on its own, like a plant, like a flower. We provide all the conditions for it to grow but we can't force it and open its petals. We have to 
simply feed it constantly. Using a little bit of will, chanda, wholesome will. And slowly it will radiate, it will imbue the body. It will become more established. smile don't be shy to smile this will help you sometimes at the beginning it might be a little awkward we think it doesn't really come from the heart but slowly we'll trick the mind and it will become very genuine researchers have made studies that show that when we smile when the corners of our mouth go up so does our mental states And when we smile, we practice the Eightfold Path, the Buddha's teaching. Notice how good it feels to feel this beautiful, loving feeling through your whole body. And take delight in this. And notice how, as you relax and bring up the loving kindness, every time the mind is distracted, every time the mind starts wandering, starts thinking about this or that, worrying about this or that, this or that doesn't really matter. These are all distractions. What matters is that you notice it, and you let go, and you relax. This is instant release, instant liberation, slowly, gradually. 
and this opens up space for loving kindness to grow and become even more established. So this is twofold relaxing and boundless love. Relaxing, then loving kindness. this feeling of loving kindness is even better when it's not only contained in the body but when it is genuinely felt for all living beings in all directions and so we allow it we let it radiate everywhere in front of you, everywhere behind you, everywhere to your left and everywhere to your right, in the four quarters, only love. everywhere above and everywhere below within and without in all seven directions love boundless measureless
without any trace of dislike or selfishness. Only love. without a particular reason. Unconditioned. Just because for the sake of happiness and peace. Sometimes after meditating for a little while, the mind comes back with force, reinforcements in distractions. Same thing. Don't bite the bait. Let it go. Relax. Smile and come back to the loving kindness. Just let it go. Relax. Doesn't matter. The monkey mind will pull out all of its tricks while you're in meditation.
we develop wisdom by noticing it by noticing the tension that comes with it the first and the second noble truths and letting it go the third noble truth and coming back to the loving kindness with a smile the fourth noble truth and like this we are practicing directly applying the core of the Buddha's teaching in our meditation and like this the mind is liberated gradually practicing in this way there is no loser everybody wins no need to beat yourself up if the mind has a lot of distractions arising no big deal don't bite relax let it go let it flow grow healthy and strong in wisdom and happiness and liberation Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakantu sabba devata sabba buddhanu bhavena sada sati bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakantu sabba devata sabba dhamma bhavenu bhavena sada sati bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakantu sabba devata sabba sanganu bhavena sarasati bhavantu te May all blessings be upon you and upon all living beings. And may you be protected by the devas, by the power of all the Buddhas, the Dhamma and the Sangha, 
May you be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Now carrying this beautiful feeling of love, universal love, boundless love. If your mind is so inclined, you can ask a question <laughs> or not. the word grace and then that word is maybe you can just expand on it a bit grace it has a context that I understand in a different way um, I just couldn't understand the word you said because it's kind of choppy I was wondering if you can talk about the word grace grace oh okay um, well the word grace um, this is the way that I've chosen to translate so manasa uh, which uh, means so so manasa is uh, broken down into su su which is uh, the same root as uh, sukha happiness or joy ease uh, pleasant it has a very wide range of uh, uses and uh, su always means uh, good do like dukkha always means not good <laughs> and so manasa is manasa is of the mind so pleasance of mind is it's often translated as pleasance mental pleasance or ease or um, I thought the word grace was fairly good <laughs> to evoke this uh, uplifted ease of mind and um, it's also translated often as mental bliss it's a word that the Buddha used quite a bit uh, somanasa and domanasa for that matter and um, it's simply pointing at the state of a mind that is that is uplifted that is at ease or or pleasant but it's uh, it's also used in a very wide variety of uh, contexts so it's not just one <laughs> definition possible did you have a particular aspect of the word that you were wondering about I just hadn't heard it before yes and, uh, in, in this context and it, it does have a, a different way of um, in in Christianity, it's a different way that they talk about grace, and so I was wondering how that if that was the same. But um, mm -hmm. I think that your explanation is really good. I I don't have a very particularly strong Christian background, so I couldn't uh, differentiate 
probably very clearly. Um, but if if you look it up in the dictionary, <laughs> it will it will explain the the Christian view on it, but it will also explain a more neutral thing. I uh, I am also very tempted to translate upeka, which is usually called equanimity, as grace, and I do translate it as mental grace sometimes, um, because equanimity means is relevant, but in some cases not so much, and mental grace I feel is closer to how the mind truly feels when it is experiencing the deep bliss of meditation. And it is very steady and present, but very open and uh, at ease, very light. And so, uh, that's the word grace. <laughs> Okay. Any more question? All right. Well, uh, I have to say, last time Hiran uh, mentioned before uh, before sharing merits, Hiran said, uh, "Oh, maybe Russell will come," and I didn't see it, but uh, I I stepped out the door and he was right there. <laughs> So maybe he's maybe he'll come for this one too. <laughs> so we can share our merits. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's teaching. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.